Yo, guys, Urban Bars brings you the best UK reactions to rap, hip hop, and urban music from all around the world. And guys, when we talk about all around the world, sometimes we'd have to talk about politics. I'm not a massive fan of politics. Seriously, not really. But sometimes things come into the thread that you just need to look at, have a quick look at and debate about. And this is one of these times, guys. So this one, guys, is China's grand plan to replace the United States as the number one superpower. Guys, let's get into it. Hello again, folks. A bit of talk in recent weeks about how China may be softening its language. The ice is finally thawing, some commentators argue. Australian officials, who haven't had as much as a phone call with their Chinese counterparts since 2019, are all of a sudden getting face-to-face -face meetings, which has, of course, coincided with a new government here. Our new Defence Minister, Richard Miles, got a meeting with his counterpart last month. And on the sidelines of the G20 in Bali last week, our new Foreign Minister, Penny Wong, met China's Foreign Minister, Wong Yi, for what we are told was a frank discussion. We do have our differences. We do have our differences. We both recognise it is a first step for both our nations. The US also got some time with Wang Yi, another one of those frank and candid discussions. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken raised concerns about Beijing's alignment with Moscow. While so this is a point, guys, because behind the scenes, people are alluding to there's some kind of maybe loose agreement between China, Russia, Iran, even North Korea. Really? But there you go. But there is a kind of power play now. There's a play because there's potentially going to be a vacuum in that power space. So all the leading proponents are putting themselves into position to fill that vacuum. So I just want to see where this goes. Well, one warned of the dangers of US-China relations. Shared again with um, State Councillor that we are concerned about the PRC's uh, alignment with Russia. Uh, now, what you hear from, from Beijing is that it claims to be neutral. Uh, I would start with the proposition that um, it's pretty hard to be neutral when it comes to, to this aggression. As our former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd tweeted on the weekend, the first law of diplomacy, always better to talk than not to, however big the differences might be. Then we got the details of just how much China is testing mm. the waters. First of all, it said the root cause of the problem in our relationship was the former coalition government. Now, for mm. those unaware, the former coalition government here banned Huawei from our 5G network, cracked down on... So the UK as well, they banned Huawei as a 5G network here in the UK around about the same time as COVID was dropping. ...government here banned Huawei from our 5G network, Crack down on China. And sorry, the reason they banned um, the Huawei was because they said the Chinese government had spying implications into a lot of the equipment that was going to go into the 5G. Yeah. The former coalition government here banned Huawei from our 5G network, cracked down on Chinese foreign investment in Australia, wanted an independent investigation into the origins of COVID-19, essentially mm. protecting our interests, not theirs. Now, China didn't like that because it stands in the way of its grand plan. We have always said that Australia hasn't changed. It was the Chinese government that has changed. And what we always wanted to see was that constructive engagement because that mm. is in the best interests of both Australia and of China. Now, what we're seeing is a first step with regards to that meeting, but everything else that follows uh, doesn't seem to show that there's a willingness for constructive engagement, yeah. and, and that is concerning. Well, Wang Yi went on to say there are four requirements Australia needs to do to improve the relationship. One, it must treat China as a partner rather than a rival. Two, the two countries must seek common ground while shelving differences. Three, Australia must reject manipulation by a third party, hmm. he said, without naming the US. And four, both countries must build public support featuring positiveness and pragmatism. 
So it's us that needs to change, not China. Hmm. How utterly ridiculous. And our government has already said that it won't accept those conditions. We won't be told what to do. That's good from Just Anthony China Albanese. Flexing. You'll notice there as well, there wasn't a word from China about its forced attention of Uyghurs, its economic coercion, its interference in our political system or its military expansion in the South China Sea. We're supposed to look the other way. <laughs> At least <laughs> one national security expert I spoke to believes there's a range of requirements that we should send the other way. I think Australia needs to go back with China with our own set of demands to right. say, first and foremost, you need to release Australian and indeed all political prisoners. Mm. Second of all, you need to drop illegal trade tariffs that you've slapped on, unilaterally slapped on Australia, which is completely against WTO regulations and rules. Um, thirdly, get the WTO is the World Trade Organization get out of the Solomon Islands and stop mm. interfering with the Pacific Island countries that absolutely don't want you there. Um, and recognise Taiwan, pay COVID reparations. There's all sorts of things that we should be saying. So what I'm getting from this, guys, is that similar to what people are saying about Russia, who have now gone into the Ukraine, they're saying that China is beginning to start fishing and start poking the areas which they shouldn't be in. So there's areas, for instance, in Taiwan, Hong Kong, which have been for many, many, many years a contentious issue. So with Taiwan looking for its own kind of autonomy, independence, etc. And the same thing with Hong Kong. The Chinese are not happy about that. But also now China is meddling and fishing on Australia's doorstep. So this is going to cause to a lot of tension, a lot of issues over the next few months. We'll see what happens. Will they escalate? I don't know. Now, they're not going to recognise Taiwan because it's mm. in its grand plan. It wants mm. to reunify the whole lot, remember? Now, as I mentioned earlier, Penny Wong is our new foreign minister who's already proving herself to be an asset in the role. She has the potential to be one of our best yet. And to her credit, has pushed back by raising her opposition to a few issues, including that ongoing detention of Australians in Beijing. My view is China is not going to budge one iota because mm. why would it? Its grand plan is to replace the US and become the world's number one superpower. So China's grand plan is to replace the US and become the world's number one superpower. I remember, and I reckon it was about 2008, I was talking to some people in boxing, etc. They were already saying then that China was planning on becoming the world's number one superpower. And China was planning to take over. So that's an interesting point to see what, what's happening now. And they were already laying the foundations way back then. There's just no way Xi Jinping will step back from that ambition, which has been building for years now. So the ice is not thawing. And any attempt to suggest otherwise just ain't true. Mm. Seeing is believing. So the only way the ice melts here is if China announces that it will pull back from its trade war, stops threatening the world with grey war tactics, stops its near daily air incursions of Taiwan and stops and pulls back its military build-up in the region and maybe even reduces its nuclear weapons. Mm. Just a few points there, you know. But you just know it's not going to do that because, as I said earlier, Wang Yi thinks it's us who needs to change. However, we do have a starting point, folks. Frank conversations are at least being held but what that starting point shows is we have a long way to go see you next week well so china's grand plan to replace united states and this is told from the perspective of, of australians i didn't know that when i downloaded this guys but yeah it was interesting i hope you enjoyed it it's here at urban bars you know we like to bring you the music but sometimes we've got to bring you other things at the same time in the same sphere but yeah if you haven't already subscribed to my channel urban bars please subscribe like share hit the notification bell look after yourselves look after each other and make certain you come back for the next urban bars reaction